Hello everyone. In today's video, I'd like to talk to you about the new mRNA vaccines that just came out in the market and that are being used to vaccinate everyone in the world. So what I specifically want to talk to you is what do we know scientifically about these vaccines? And the reality is that there is still very little science available to us. So we did review the papers that were submitted to the authoritative bodies uh, that regulate the market, uh, such as FDA and Health Canada. And that's probably the best uh, information that is currently available to us. So what can we say about the vaccines right now? Um, this, obviously, a lot of people are nervous about these vaccines. We expected that because a lot of people are nervous about vaccines in general. But these are brand new vaccines, first of its kind, new technology. So there is even more angst about it. So the good news so far that they do appear very safe. So the data that was submitted um, was based on thousands of people and there was very, very uh, few negative side effects recorded. And at this point, um, vaccines have been obviously rolled out around the world. We have data, or um, I shouldn't say we have data, uh, I should mention more like that more than 50 million people have been already vaccinated. And so far, there is no obvious information coming out to the forefront stating that there's any serious problems with these vaccines. So that's actually really good news. What is really surprising maybe about these vaccines is how little information we have in terms of its effectiveness. And the reason why I mentioned that is that the documents that were submitted for approval, while thousands of individuals were tested, very few of those actually got sick with COVID-19. So approximately maybe 1% of the population that was tested got sick, which means the data that was available is based on at most few hundred sick people. And that was then subsequently extrapolated to literally millions of people around the world. So the true experiment about the use of these vaccines and its efficacy is happening right now as we are vaccinating the people around the world which is why you might see that there is hesitation, including amongst healthcare workers in different areas of the world about the vaccines. And the reason why is just because some people want more science information. Right now, that is still not available, not to my knowledge, perhaps it is, but I haven't found it yet. I'm very keen on being able to study that information. As soon as I know, I'll be able to update you with that. But so far, at least we know they appear to be very safe. There is some anecdotal information coming out that some people might have died from these vaccines. However, this is none of that is actually confirmed. When you inoculate millions of people, obviously, obviously some people will coincidentally die from natural causes or causes that would naturally happen in a population anyway. So none of that is yet verified. However, also, it is not unexpected that eventually someone might truly die from the vaccine. That is also normal. It's the same risk we take every single time you take a new medication that you've never taken before. There's always a real risk that a person could die from a medication. And that happens actually all the time. We just don't necessarily talk about it. So. Don't be surprised if eventually there will be a very real report saying someone might have died because of vaccine. But when we're testing millions of people and we're not seeing that yet, we can state that these are very safe and deep. We just don't know yet what the long term consequences are. And um, we also don't necessarily know how efficacious they are against certain age groups. So to give you one example, the two primary target groups that are being at the moment specifically targeted with the vaccines are obviously healthcare workers because they are at the highest risk of infection. And then the next group after that are elderly. And in the submitted data, we almost have no data at all against that target group because almost n there was very few people in the original data that was submitted to the regulatory bodies, very few people uh, 65 years and over 
who actually got sick. So really, we don't know if these vaccines work against very old people. We're just simply extrapolating it from the information from younger people. So why did that happen? Is because when the studies were designed, they were designed against a demographic that mimics what the actual demographic in North America uh, is. And as a consequence of that, the vast majority of people were younger people, not necessarily the people who are truly at risk of dying of COVID-19. So this is still a bit unusual and indeed so far there's been only one warning from Norwegian um, health, uh, health authorities stating that perhaps very elderly people should consider not taking the vaccine because if you're really, really old, any side effects you might experience might be themselves detrimental enough uh, that it might not be of benefit for you to take the vaccine. So that is, we're talking about people perhaps in their late 80s or 90s. So that's a potential consideration. Um, obviously, I really hope the vaccines will work myself because we, we want uh, the COVID pandemic to be over. But personally, I'm also excited about it from another point of view. And that's because if these vaccines will work, and they so far they seem to be working, this will usher a new era of medicine, which basically would mean medicine that will allow us to manipulate our genetics. And that's really fascinating. So we're entering completely new paradigm here with these, with these vaccines. Uh, there are scientific publications, uh, also still non-peer-reviewed publications, reports that are already published that show vaccines do indeed elicit antibody production and they, and they do work. But another potential big question that might be on your mind right now is, would these vaccines work against the newly emerging strains that we heard about, such as the one in UK that caused a lot of uh, fear and noise? And there is also some data coming out on that. And indeed, there is a possibility that these vaccines might not work against these new strains as effectively as the original strains um, for which the vaccine was actually designed for. So what that potentially might mean is that we will need to remake the vaccines and that we as a population will have to be revaccinated numerous times as the virus continues to mutate into more threatening form. Um, but more data will be uh, needed for this for us to truly know that. So that's unfortunate because that also means that with these new strains, those who have been sick before also potentially might run the risk of being reinfected once again with the new viral strains. Some people, depending on where the antibodies are produced um, against which area of the virus, some, for some people, the, this vaccine will work against any strain, but if the antibody is produced to contact the virus elsewhere, it might not work against the new strain. So that's what we know so far um, based on the available data and I'm very keen on searching for that information. As we have more information available, I'll continue making these videos. Thank you very much and um, see you next time.